Hi everyone, I'm Amy Johnson Crow. I am here today in front of the beautiful Allegheny River. I'm here today with James Beidler. I think a lot of us can appreciate having a strong German heritage and it can be challenging. And Jim has some great ideas, some great suggestions for us to get started with our German heritage. One thing that, that I've had trouble with in my German research is trying to figure out that town where they came from. Any suggestions on what to do? How much time do you have on that? <laughs> uh, yes, the, the, the village of origin is, is crucial uh, because uh, so many records in Germany or really the German states as they were mm -hmm. when, when the immigrants came over uh, are kept locally. Uh, and they, they, don't, they don't have any what I would call national record groups like our U.S. Census. You know, that, that is kind of an evergreen, no matter your ethnicity, no matter where you're at in the United States. You know, that's, that's, where, that's where you go a lot of times mm -hmm. for a lot of your information. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany doesn't have it. It has fine records, church records, civil registers, uh, some uh, other tax and, and civil type, uh, type information. Uh, but in, for the most part, they are, they are kept uh, on, still on the village level. Uh, or uh, on uh, the equivalent of our county, uh, once in a while on the equivalent of our of our states, uh, but uh, but to do to do effective research across the water, it, it does require the the name of the village of origin a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, with with all those records being so specific to a location. And you, you, you mentioned doing research across the pond. Is there anything that we can do on this side to help narrow it down? Because, and, and as you alluded to, you know, the, the German states. I mean, Germany wasn't even a country mm -hmm. until... 1871. 1871. So a lot of us have, have German ancestors, you know, far before that. Yep. So, yep. so how can we even get clues on where to mm -hmm. start thinking mm -hmm. about narrowing it down? Yeah. Well, the, the the first the first thing as far as finding finding that village of origin is basically to be looking for every potential American record of, around your ancestor, which may seem very obvious, uh, but but things like their their naturalization record, uh, their uh, tombstones, uh, the uh, church records in America many times you know with their burial uh, or, or you know pretty much pretty much any record I mean one example I can give you uh, a uh, actually a Catholic uh, family right here in Pittsburgh that I was working on mm -hmm. for a client had uh, ten children like a good Catholic family <laughs> uh, and of their ten children's uh, baptisms uh, only one of them listed the uh, village of origin for the father Oh, uh, and nice. and that's a, and that and that that's another uh, uh, reason to do collateral research because right. it wasn't my client's direct line ancestor uh, who whose baptism had it. It was one of the siblings. It was one of the siblings. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but yeah. that unlocked the uh, the village of origin. Uh, related to that, you know, oh, you know, you're 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 gonna hopefully at some point get the good news of finding this village of origin in an American record. Mm -hmm. Then the other, the other problem that crops up, well, a twofold problem. One is many villages in Germany have, uh, there, there are duplicate, duplicates of them. You know, call it, call it, oh. call it the, the Heimheim syndrome, uh, you know, where, 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 there's, where there's 30 different villages having the, having the same name. Which one is it? And there you have to use clues like what was the religion, because certain parts of Germany were mostly Catholic, others were mostly Protestant. Okay. Uh, occupation, you know, other, other uh, contextual clues. Mm -hmm. The other part is a lot of times, even, even for the records of the immigrant, uh, let alone if a, if a village of origin has come down in oral testimony over mm -hmm. generations, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's going to be garbled. Right. Uh, garb garbled just from, you know, phonetics, uh, also from, from people, uh, you know, 
losing the the German mother tongue, mm -hmm. and and now in English, you know, trying to transliterate it and so forth. Right. Uh, but uh, but those those things you have to kind of keep on your toes uh, to uh, to try to try to uh, to find that village in Germany. Like I say, can be can be in baptism records, can be in burial records, marriage records. Uh, you know, pretty pretty much anything. I, I had I had one person who solved the village mystery uh, because uh, of a postmark of a letter from Germany from relatives oh, in the nice. old country. Yeah, it, g it gave them the the village name on that postmark mm -hmm. as a place to start looking. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you know, you, you brought up something that, that I hadn't really considered that since there were so many different states until, you know, 1871 that, you know, sometimes even having the name of the village is not enough because then you have to narrow it down yeah. which yeah. which village. Are there are there any good maps or atlases or gazetteers that, that we can use to <laughs> at least get an idea of where the, all these different villages are? Yeah. Well, one of, one of the most exciting uh, things in German genealogy in the last year is uh, the website MyersGaz.org went live. And what that is is an electronic version of the Myers Gazetteer of the German Empire okay. from the early 1900s. Okay. And, and, and that, uh, that Gazetteer, uh, what, what they've done in the electronic version is they have the original text uh, which gives kind of a summary of of uh, what the village is about, its population, where it's located, uh, what sort of industries it has, whether it has a Catholic church, a Protestant church, whatever. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then and they also on that Myers Gas site is they have uh, the um, uh, the modern day map. Uh, show locating it okay. GPS style, okay. and then you can also toggle to a historical map from the 1880s oh, to nice. see how the villages looked like at that point. Because a lot of villages have been merged into larger units today, oh. may not be on a modern day map, but they will be well, on, on the historical the, on map. On the historical map, yeah. that's awesome. Yes. And, and I'll be sure to add a, a link to MyersGaz.org yes. in the in the in the show notes, so you can you can find that right below. Well, Jim, thank you so much for helping us navigate our, our way back to the old country. If people want to find out more about you and your, your research services, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at the www.jamesmbeidler.com. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for joining us, and thank you for, for joining us, and we will catch you later.